We're here at the mouth of Newtown Creek now, and Newtown Creek is really a parable of how the New York City waterfront has changed so dramatically in just a couple of generations. Newtown Creek is exciting for me. It's a great opportunity to kind of take all the lessons that we've learned in the past about how to make a more equitable and accessible waterfront, something more rich and biodiverse, and apply them before this kind of change process hits the creek. You know, retain industry, retain a working waterfront where we can, create get downs and intertidal habitat um, and really create more this sort of watery realm as a civic space uh, where, where possible. I started doing this in the late 70s uh, in these issues uh, and I thought it was very important to retain manufacturing jobs. We had about five, six hundred thousand left in the city at that point. We were losing them and you could see that uh, land use, uh, land is valuable for office space, for residences. It was pushing out the manufacturing, it was pushing out the industrial uses. And I thought that that's fine to an extent, but you have to retain land for industrial uses, for, tra for transportation uses. And I started trying to protect land uh, in various different ways, uh, fighting a rear guard battle, really, to protect land for rail terminals, for ports, uh, for factories, and so forth. New York grew up around its harbor. It's the greatest natural harbor in certainly North America. We have a tremendous natural asset in the wind off the shore. The cost of wind power and solar power is coming, is coming down very rapidly, and we need that because we've got to get away from fossil fuels. And we have the maritime assets here in the space to assemble the wind turbines and get them out where they're supposed to be. And that's good industry and it's good jobs. When we think of the waterfront and all the purposes that it serves, we also think about the vulnerability of the waterfront itself and how the water can um, be destructive in ways, but also it's there for public access and for viewing and for so many other purposes. There's many different things that, that we can do in different ways to be resilient, and it's about the conversation with the community and the city about what that, what that is and what that can be. Resiliency is not about creating something to block mother nature. You have to work with it. So you have to understand and deal with what you have. You can't necessarily overcome it. So our design and our construction approach informs how to build this. And we go to other projects, it does the same thing. It informs what we need to do and that the solution that we had for this is not always the same solution for other projects. And it's important I think for us as design professionals to evaluate every project case by case for those four things, the ecology, the shoreline protection, um, storm resiliency, and, and public access, and see what the best approaches are for that particular project, because they'll change from one project to the next. One example that I like to use is uh, in Superstorm Sandy, tremendous coastal flooding. So all of our reactions tend to be, what do we do about coastal flooding? And we tend, even in very high level, to forget about the rains that normally accompany those kinds of storms. So we need to be able to understand first what the threats are, agree on what those are, and then agree how we want to address those threats, come up with legislation, plans, and funding that goes with them. And talk about resiliency, you never want to be uh, totally dependent on one thing that could break or be blocked for vital uh, materials. Everything that is used in New York City, Long Island, Westchester, 93% of it comes in by truck over the George Washington Bridge. We have to have a redundant system so that we're not totally dependent on one, on one link. Um, that's part of resiliency and that's what the rail freight tunnel, that's one reason for the rail freight tunnel, give us an alternative route. As much as Superstorm Sandy and was a tragedy uh, in this region, it also kind of was an eye-opener for all of us who worked together on the harbor. In my view, we made a lot of really great decisions after, after Superstorm Sandy, not to wall ourselves off from the water, not to create a fortress, not to um, essentially cut um, our harbor, <laughs> uh, and to really preserve what we value. Waterfront Alliance has been such a huge benefit to the community in providing tools like Wedge that help us to educate and promote that with our clients in a way that clients can understand. It's groups like the Waterfront Alliance and Newtown Creek Alliance, active community engagement, um, that really kind of keep this change process in check and really make it work for people 
and for the ecosystems that are here.